This lesson is for section 9.3. This is part two of our sum to product formulas. So we're going to continue to use those formulas, but now we're going to focus on trying to verify identities. Um, identities are not easy. I realize that. They are definitely challenging, which I think makes them fun. Uh, hopefully you like them too. But basically, in order to not feel completely lost in identities, you have to have a really good handle on all of the formulas that we've shown you guys um, in our prove it notes. So if you know all of those identities, you know, like the back of your hand, then manipulating an expression shouldn't be very tough for you. Um, if you don't have a good handle on those identities, though, it can be very shaky. You know, it's, it's very frustrating to work with an identity if you have nowhere to start and you're not sure how to manipulate it. So my suggestion for you would be, even prior to listening to this uh, lesson, Go ahead and try these, uh, see how far you get. If you get them all, great, that's awesome. If not, then you can go ahead and listen to some of the explanations and see how I decided to show um, and to verify the trig identity. Of course, there's more, more than one way to do this, um, but I'm going to show you a few different things um, in the next few problems. So go ahead and pause if you'd like and, and uh, get started. Okay, let's get started on our first identity. Um, on the left-hand side, this is definitely more complex than the right. On the right-hand side, if you try to do anything with this, all you can do is write in terms of sine and cosine, and you get stuck. So we're going to focus here on the left-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I notice that in the numerator, I have a difference of two sine functions. So I'm going to try to change that into a product, um, and probably do the same thing with in this in the denominator. So let's focus on the sine of 3x minus the sine of x. We know from our formulas, the sine of a plus b minus the sine of a minus b is going to equal 2 cosine a sine b's. So in this case, um, we actually don't know what a and b are, right? We don't know the a and b values because they're, they're sandwiched together, right? a plus b is 3x and a minus b is x. So based off of um, our little note that we have in our prove it notes, a plus b plus a minus b should equal 2a, and a plus b minus a minus b should give me 2b. So that's how I can solve for the a and b values here. So if I add 3x and 4x, or, uh, x, I get 4x, divide by 2 and I get a is equal to 2x. Um, here if I do 3x minus x, and that should be equal to 2b, after I simplify and divide by 2, I end up with b is equal to x. So I'm just going to use substitution now. And the left-hand side here in the numerator, the sine of 3x minus the sine of two, uh, just x becomes 2 times the cosine of 2x times the sine of just x. Okay, and that's again all based off of just substituting in those values now. Okay? All right, now in the numerator, or I'm sorry, in the denominator, I want to do a very similar uh, thing here. So let's figure out what we're using. We have cosine of 3x plus the cosine of x. So the cosine of a plus b plus the cosine of a minus b should equal 2 times the cosine of a times the cosine of b. And in this case, um, uh, it's going to be the same values, right? It's 3x and x. So I already know that the a value should be 2x and the b value. So a is 2x and the b value is x. So just by substitution here, let's do this in blue. I have 2 times the cosine of 2x times the cosine of just x. And, lucky for us, cosines of 2x's cancel, the 2's cancel, and we're left with sine x over cosine x. So we have sine x over cosine x, which is equal to the tangent of x, which is exactly what we were trying to show. Alright, next up in problem 2, um, I'm going to focus again on the left-hand side here because I can take the sine of 4x plus the sine of 2x and try to rewrite that as a product. So this again is going to be 2 times the sine of your a value times the sine of, or I'm sorry, the cosine of your b value. And in this case, uh, if I want to solve for a, I take 4x plus 2x, I set that equal to 2a, and I take 4x minus 2x, and I set that equal to 2b. So we get 6x equals 2a, which means a equals 3x. And we also have 2x equals 2b, which means b is just x. And from here, we just make the substitution in for the a and the b value. So let me erase now. So a was 3x, b was x. So the sine of 4x plus 2x is going to be rewritten as 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of just x. And then we have that divided by the sine of 2x. Okay, so so far I see that I have a sine of 3x, that's a good sign, but I don't want to have a cosine of x because I need to get rid of that since there's no cosine x in terms of the right-hand side there. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is look again at the sine of 2x here and try to rewrite that. The sine of 2x, let's just rewrite real quick, sorry. So 2 sine, of, two sine 3x times the cosine of x over, now the sine of 2x becomes 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. And then by rewriting that using that double angle there, um, I can cross out the 2s and the cosine of x's so that I'm left with the sine of 3x over the sine of x, which is exactly what I was trying to show in the first place. So again, if you ever feel like you're stuck, always refer back to you know what you're trying to show and continue to, to whittle it down to whatever's um, on the right-hand side. So because I knew that I didn't want any cosines, I tried to get rid of that um, by expanding the sine of 2x and using a double angle formula there. All right, next up, number three here. Um, I'm going to work on the left-hand side again because even if I try to rewrite tangent here, um, again, it can only be written in terms of cosine and sine, and I'll get stuck. So I'm going to focus on the left-hand side. Now, uh, in the numerator, I see the difference of two cosines. And remember, the difference of two cosines, so cosine of a plus b minus the cosine of a minus b, that leaves you with the, your second term, which is going to be negative. So negative two uh, cosine, I'm sorry, sine a sine b. Right? Okay, so if I wanted to rewrite this, I definitely know I'm going to use a negative 2, but I don't have the value for a and b, so I need to find that. Remember, this is the value of a plus b, and this is the value of a minus b. So to find our a and b's, I need to solve. So I use x plus y should equal 2a. Again, let me just rewrite that in, in case you're confused where that's coming from. That's my a plus b plus a minus b equals 2a. So just by substitution, x is a plus b, y is a minus b. So I have x plus y equals 2a, which means that a is x plus y over 2. And to find my b value, I do the same thing. I take a plus b. This time I subtract, though, a minus b. Set that equal to 2b. And I have x minus y equals 2b, or b equaling x minus y over 2. So coming back up here, if I want to rewrite that as a product, cosine x minus cosine y becomes negative 2 times the sine of, it's going to look a little bit more complicated, but x plus y over 2 times the sine of x minus y over 2, because those are my a and b values. Okay, so there's the numerator rewritten. I'm going to erase everything here, and then we'll work on the sine. Now for the sine, we're going to do the same thing here. We uh, have to choose... So we have oops, sine of a plus b plus the sine of a minus b. That should equal 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of a. So we'll use substitution here again. Uh, we need to find out what a and, and oops, I don't know how I wrote that. I hope I said cosine of b instead of cosine a. Okay, so we need to find our a and b values. So we come back here and we look at this. This is again a plus b and this is a minus b since we just did it above. We should already know what a and b are. So we have 2 times the sine of x plus y over 2 times the cosine of x minus y over 2. So there's our numerator and denominator rewritten using our uh, sum to product formulas. All right, now, just by doing some simple uh, you know, cancellations here, this negative 2s will cancel. Sine of x plus y over 2 will cancel with the sine of x plus y over 2. And we're left with negative sine of x minus y over 2 over the cosine of x minus y over 2, which is going to be equal to the negative tangent of x minus y over 2. And that's exactly what we were trying to show. Okay, next up in problem 4, um, I do see that I have a product on the left-hand side and a pretty big sum on the right-hand side. So it's really up to you where you want to start. Let's say we start with the left-hand side. If I want to change this product into a sum, I'd look at the cosine of x and the cosine of 2x, and I'd think to myself, well, how do you get that? Well, you only get the cosine times cosine if you are either adding or subtracting cosines, and in this case it'd be adding uh, the cosine of a plus b and the cosine of a minus b. That's not very helpful to me in this sense, just because right off the bat I'm introducing cosines, and I just want to have it in terms of sines on the other side. So I kind of say to myself, well, that might take me somewhere, but... I'm not going to even worry about that. I'm going to look on the right-hand side instead. So we're x and a on trying the, the left-hand side. Let's work on the right. Now on the right-hand side, I see sine of 2x plus the sine of 4x. 
So I can rewrite that sum as a product. I am going to just switch the order that those are written just so that I can uh, guarantee that I don't have to work with any negative values. Okay, now when we're dealing with the sine of t or the sum of two sines, we end up with 2 times the sine of a times the cosine of b. Now I have to figure out what a and b are, because remember this number here, 2x and 4x, that's already a, well this one is a minus b, right, since I switched the order. So this is the a plus b value, this is the a minus b value, so remember you have to add those two terms together, and then divide them by 2 to get your a value. So a is 3x in this case. Um, so I have 2 times the sine of 3x, and for my b value, I take the difference of those two, solve for b, and I would get x, so cosine of x. So again, just by substitution here, the sine of 2x plus the sine of 4x should end up being 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of x. Okay, now, let me erase. I've at least introduced a 3x. That's good, sine 3x. I also have a value that 2 out in front, so that's even better. I'm getting closer to, you know, having a, a 4. Um, and I also have a cosine of x. So those are all good things that I've done so far. And that's, again, just by taking these two and rewriting that. So I have plus the oops, sine of 6x. Now, I clearly don't have any 6x's over on this side, so let's try to break this one down. I'm going to use a double angle formula here. So I have 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of x plus... The double angle formula here, I know that that's going to be 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of 3x. Um, and then, this is even better for me because I can factor out um, a sine of 3x here. Right? So, if I do that, I have 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of x plus the cosine of 3x. And now, um, again, I want to change this into a product, and I see that this here is, has a sum in it, and eventually I just want it all to be a product, so I'm going to change that sum into a product as well. And I can think of this as the cosine of 3x plus the cosine of x, again, so that I'm not dealing with any negative, um, you know, x values. Okay, so this, be, this becomes 2 times the sine of 3x times cosine plus cosine gives me uh, 2 cosine cosine. So in this case, my a value, if I take 3x plus x, divide, I should get a is equal to 2x, so 2 times the cosine of 2x multiplied by the cosine of, if I take 3x minus x and I divide that by 2, that gives me my, gives me my b value, which is going to be x, and there we go. So, if I were to just to rewrite this, I just change that into a product, right? I have 2 times 2, so 4, cosine x, cosine 2x, and sine 3x. And there is exactly what we were trying to show from the beginning. All right, last up are a couple of review problems. Now, we've already done similar questions, so if you want to try these on your own, you're more than welcome to. Um, again, you're just applying those uh, sum to product or product to sum formulas. So here we're, we're going to evaluate the cosine of 75 minus the cosine of 15, even though we don't know what those individual uh, values are. So we change this difference here into a product. Now, I know that the cosine of a plus b minus the cosine of a minus b turns into negative 2 times the sine of a times the sine of b. So um, all that's left to do basically in this problem is figure out what my a and b values are. So I take a plus b plus a minus b and I set that equal to 2a because I know that that's equal to 2a so I have 75 plus 15 equals 2a. Oops which means a is going to equal 45. And if I solve for the, the b value now, I have a plus b minus a minus b equaling 2b, which means that b in this case, if I take 75 minus 15 and I cut it in half, I get 30 degrees. Okay, so just by substitution here, I know that the cosine of 75 minus the cosine of 15 degrees should equal negative 2 times the sine of 45 times the sine of 30 degrees. And, sorry, I keep forgetting the degrees. Okay, so let's evaluate here. This is now going to be negative 2 times the sine of 45 is going to be root 2 over 2. The sine of 30, remember this is your uh, 
distance away from the x-axis is the smallest, so that's going to be your smallest value here, which means that that's one half. And uh, if we evaluate this, I end up with root two, negative root two over two. Okay, number six looks an awful lot like number five. Here we're trying to evaluate the sine of 75 plus the sine of 15 degrees, and again, we don't know what these particular values are, so we'll try to change this into a product. Um, so the sine uh, the, t the sum of two sines is always going to result in 2 times the uh, sine of A times the cosine of B. The only thing I have to do is figure out what my A and B values are. By this time, I hope that this is um, very unnecessary for you guys, for me to write all this out. But just in case, I'm going to do that every time. Okay, so there's my setup Okay, to solve for A and for B. Um, so I take 75 degrees plus 15 degrees, because again, this is your A plus B value, this is your A minus B value. And I end up with 45, and if I take A plus B and subtract the A minus B value, and divide by 2, I end up with B equaling 30 degrees. So, same values from above. Okay, so we have 2 times the sine of uh, 45 degrees, times the cosine of 30 degrees. So evaluating here, we have 2 times root 2 over 2. The cosine of 30, remember this is going to be your longest value. So it's got the shortest distance away from the x, but the longest value here. So we have root 3 over 2. And if I uh, multiply these values, I end up with root 6 over 2. Okay, that's the exact value for the sine of 75 plus the sine of 15. If you ever wanted to verify any of these, you could do them in your calculator. Just make sure that your mode is in degrees, if that's your input. Um, and if not, then if it's in terms of like pi over 3 or something, you have to make sure it's in radians. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. I will see you guys tomorrow in class.